Thank you. Meat lovers unite. It's barbecue time on top of Whistler Mountain today on the Express. Coming up. We have our hawk barbecue here on Whistler Blackcomb. Barbecue soars to mountaintop heights. And we'll be distributing the guitars around the world and building jobs in Africa one guitar at a time. I really love my bacon. <laughs> then who loves bacon? We do, we do. Summer eating from Vancouver to Whistler, the Express, you'll only find it here on Shaw TV. Welcome to the Express on Shaw TV. I'm your Sea Sky host, Nicole Fitzgerald. And nothing says summer like a good old fashioned barbecue. And today we're taking that experience all the way up to 6,000 feet on Whistler Mountain and the food is as good as the views. The experience really begins at the base of Whistler Mountain. Um, our guests, they upload onto the Whistler Village gondola and it's about a 20 minute ride um, up to the top of Whistler, up to the Roundhouse Lodge where we are right now. And um, yeah, along the way, guests are likely to see amazing views of the Alpine um, as well as a bear too. I've been waiting all winter, summer food. What are you working on today? Ah, uh, we have our Friday night hawk barbecue here on Whistler Blackcomb, and we have one of our succulent pigs in front of us that we've roasted all day. When you step back here, you can see some of our St. Louis style cut ribs that have Dusty's butt rub on it. And then over here, you have some pork butt that is smoking right now with alder wood. We have pork butts, pork ribs. We have fresh succulent pigs on Friday. We do a prime rib dinner on Saturday where we have Italian sausages and roasted potatoes. And then Sunday we roll into having fresh seafood with coho salmon, some prawns, some mussels and clams, and then salads and desserts to boot. Usually we'd start with a selection of fresh baked biscuits, then there's salads such as Greek salad, a barbecued potato salad with a chipotle dressing on it that's a little bit different than the ordinary. And then you get into more of the side dishes of baked beans with bacon in it. Today we have an apple and berry betty on, which just finishes off the meal quite nice. Barbecues aren't about wine pairings, they're about live music pairings here on top of Whistler Mountain. I'm here with Brother Twang. What are some summer tunes that we're going to be enjoying tonight? Well, first and foremost, it's always with our originals. Uh, so Running Through to You is probably one of our favorite originals to play. Fade through the light, picture on the sky, babe. Just take a night, we'll the morning. You'll probably hear a bit of Paul Simon. You might hear a bit of Jackson 5. Uh, you might hear some blues rock like Clutch. There's no telling. We want to showcase that Whistler Blackcomb is not just known for ski food, but we also have a great summer program. And that you can come up on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and actually have a culinary experience with a little bit of live entertainment. The mountaintop barbecue happens every weekend all summer long. On Fridays, it's all about a roasted whole hog. On Saturdays, prime rib, and on Sundays, seafood. Give a man a fish, and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. Meet a Surrey family that believes in this old proverb. Only instead of casting fishing lines, they're teaching people how to string guitar ones. Welcome to the Duncan Africa Guitar Making Studio <laughs> here in Mpiji. Africa. <laughs> Jay and Irina Duncan have spent seven years establishing a trade school in Uganda, teaching locals how to build high quality guitars and make a fair wage in the process. The guys build the guitars in Uganda and they ship them here to Canada where we go over them, set them up and then we sell them off and it helps to run the trade school. And the goal eventually is that the guys are going to own their own business, their own manufacturing company and we'll be distributing their guitars around the world. Since Duncan Africa's inception, the project has become a full-time gig, and the Duncan clan has grown to include two sons, with a third child on the way. This is not a charity like a regular charity where, you know, we get paid here no matter what happens in Africa. My family's fate is tied to our guys in Uganda. Every week, it seems like there's a paycheck, but some weeks there aren't. And when that happens, uh, my family is the one who takes the hit, um, which has made it very, very challenging. It's been tough having such young children and trying to do this project. And this project 
really requires us to do our work from morning till night. And so it's definitely difficult to manage, um, but we really believe in this project and we're very excited about the future. Jay has been building guitars professionally or as a hobby for most of his life. His passion has spread to his students in Uganda and it shows in their product. I played his guitars and uh, I love them. And I uh, took one of Jay's guitars to England one time with me to play and uh, the sound tech couldn't believe how good it sounded. So far, the group has built 150 guitars with only 14 students. They hope to expand to 50 workers and 200 guitars a month. And that goal just got a little closer. Now we have a bunch of guys working in this house. It's just a thousand square feet. But last month, we received a grant to uh, build our own trade school. We are about to build a building. It's 2,400 square feet. Uh, with a big high roof and room for more people. It's going to allow us to bring in machinery, which is going to help them to be more efficient and uh, to do better quality work. Jay's family hopes to see Duncan Africa inspire others to help develop fair industry across Africa, all starting in this little village of 10,000 with some guitars. The one thing that manufacturing can do for Africa is that it can create jobs. When you create jobs, uh, education goes up, literacy goes up, problems with health care go down, and uh, everybody is better off. I see the little kids that play there, and uh, with very little opportunity, um, that one day they'll be educated and grow up to be doctors and nurses and then take care of their community around them. To check out their inventory or learn more about the project, visit DuncanAfrica.com or check them out on Facebook. I'm Paul McClellan in Surrey for The Express. A full guitar catalog is available. The website to visit is DuncanAfrica.com. You can also volunteer to help grow this incredible program. Live music is always on the Playbill here at the Mountaintop Barbecue on Whistler Mountain. The Express, you'll only find it here on Shaw TV. Next up, a feast for your eyes. It's very team-based. After the break. Pay attention to so many different factors all at once. Opening the doors to glass-blowing enthusiasts. So stars generate their own light. And is it a star or a planet? Cam and Reminder have our answers. Nicole Fitzgerald's clothing provided by Peak Performance. Ski gear provided by Nordica. Hair styling by The Loft Salon. Makeup by Beauty Mark. Parking provided by the Fire Rock Lounge. Welcome to the BC Sports Hall of Fame. My name is Jason Beck and I'm the Hall of Fame's curator. Since Vancouver Police Officer Duncan Gillis won a silver medal in the 16-pound hammer at the 1912 Olympic Games, BC athletes have performed tremendously at the Summer Olympics. Let's take a look back at a few of BC's great moments at the Games. Some of Canada's greatest Olympic athletes have come from British Columbia. Vancouver sprinters Mary Frizzell and William Palmer helped the Canadian 4x100 meter relay team to an Olympic silver medal using this relay baton. Mary wore this Canadian Olympic singlet at those same games. And Vancouver sprinter Percy Williams made history when he won the gold medal in both the 100 meters and the 200 meters wearing these track spikes. To see and learn more of BC's greatest Olympic athletes, come visit the BC Sports Hall of Fame today at Gate A of BC Place Stadium. 